Hello, this is Eric of Sparky Studio and welcome to my overview of four different audio interfaces. The point of this video is to help you find which one works best for you and why the one with the most ports might not be the best. Now let's start with looking at the Universal Audio Apollo Twin X Gen 2. Looking at the Universal Audio Apollo Twin X, we see the headphone ports and the instrument port. Look at the back end of the Apollo, we have two dual XLR 6.35 millimeter ports, dual 6.35 millimeter out ports, barrel connection power, Thunderbolt, optical in, and an on off physical switch. Personas Quantum ES2 has a similar fill to the Apollo with the headphone and instrument port, dual XLR 6.35 millimeter, one set of out stereo, MIDI, and this is the only one that has MIDI here for connection type, USB with supplemental optional power, and on off switch, just like the Apollo. This is the Meono PS22 Lite, headphone port here and our connections here. We only have one XLR in, but this has a dual jack and the guitar as well as our outputs. Lewitt Connect 2 is all capacitive touch. There are no physical buttons. And on the back side, we have all the ports right there. XLR, instrument by itself, as well as monitor out and dual headphone type jacks. The Lewitt Connect 2, which I'm not showing right now because um, mine was defective. Denoise, this removes ro room noise. Now I lowered my sample rate. I'll show you what denoise does. Did you hear that horrible self noise? Right now I'm using a dynamic microphone and that's not a problem anymore. Now let's get started. Sparky Studio. Yeah. Now to start things off with these audio interfaces, in terms of build quality, they are quite different. The most expensive one, the Apollo Twin X is nice solid metal. I would call that a five out of five in terms of build quality. You're not gonna get much better unless you have no display because it's solid. Our next one, of course, is the Personas Quantum ES2, which is metal, but thinner. The Lewitt Connect 2, which I don't have anymore because I returned it because I had a problem and I recorded over that video footage. Now this one is the Miono PS22 Lite and of course being the cheapest audio interface by far, it is plastic. Lowest build quality but still decent. Definitely worth the money that you pay for. Portability, that's quite important because if we're talking about the Universal Audio Apollo 2NX, you have to use external power plus your system. It's small, of course it's portable. Can I move it somewhere else? Not until I unlock it from the iLock software so I can reinstall and re-register it. It's locked to one system. I'm not just gonna toss it to a mobile phone because I can't. I'm not gonna put it to my laptop and it's locked to my computer because now I have to remove it and my computer has to have it for Thunderbolt edition, has to have Thunderbolt. In terms of portability, <laughs> it's thumbs down on that one. It's the worst of the bunch for portability. And if you have windows, enjoy your crackling sound until you hack it so it can work properly with other programs other than your DAW that has ASIO. Because without ASIO, I wish you good luck. Here's Audacity Free and I have a recording with the Windows driver for the Universal Audio Apollo. And this is how I'm coming through. On Windows that is. With Mac, you'll have a better experience. Remember, this is the Studio Plus software. And one thing we'll notice is almost nothing's included, not even a guitar tuner. If you want a guitar tuner, it's uh, hanging behind a paywall. At this time, regular retail price, $300. Currently on sale for $149. The Personas Quantum ES2. Now, what is up with this? What is my experience with the newest firmware? I can connect a battery bank USB type C to this, at least one that has good power output on its supplemental power. And then I can connect it to my mobile phone, my laptop, my, my PC or whatever. I can have it in the go as long as I have a battery bank with proper supplemental power beyond USB 2.0, of course. Has to be type C for supplemental power, but now it is portable. Score one for the Personas over the Universal Audio. 
Now the Connect 2, I have to show some previous footage. It is portable. It is indeed portable. In fact, I can stick it in my pocket and that makes it a nice advantage over even the PS22 Lite from me. Oh no. And I have the desktop actually as the instrument. So if I turn my uh, microphone on. So let's quickly do a quick demo of the guitar and I'll mute my microphone for this. Right here I have my Fine Fine Tank 3 and uh, the difference between it clipping and not clipping is not too obvious. It goes from orange to red in terms of it clipping. Right now I'm using my mobile phone and this is what we're hearing using this audio interface and hopefully I'm not clipping. Okay, I can see I'm not clipping on my camera. And uh, yeah, there we go. This is to my mobile phone recording this microphone using the Meono PS22 Lite. No supplemental power, it's nice and easy just like the Lewitt Connect 2, not a problem. Now in terms of portability, this would be 4 out of 5. But why 4 out of 5 and not 5 out of 5? It was the fact I can't pocket this darn thing and if I want to, say, put it in a jacket pocket that might be big, I have a headphone port that's right on the side here. And then everything else goes out this way. That makes it very inconvenient in comparison to the Lewitt Connect 2. We have the two quarter inch jack or 6.35 millimeters, two, what, a quarter inch or 3.5 millimeters, whatever one you would call that in size or some I just call it TRS, the monitor out. Then I connect this side to my digital camera and have stereo audio. And using this, connected with my Rode NTG5, which is above my head right now, connect it on my camera to my camera cage, my mic in here, I have an on-camera mic, I have an XLR cable to the connect to, okay? So get that. And that XLR cable is going to this, connected to my camera. And this goes to my camera while well, it's in my pocket or it can have a mixing bag if I was a sound mixer and have an option for audio other than buying, say, a Zoom F3. Like if I turn up the Zoom F3 and I record directly to camera, if I turn up much, if I turn it up beyond plus four in terms of volume, it gets hissy. So the Connect 2 is actually a better option if I don't want to use the recorded 32-bit float. It's not going to do 32-bit float to a camera. You're always going to have to add it back in. And here is the Personas Quantum ES2. We see that light, that red light. That means I don't have enough power to run this. Right now, I have this powered with supplemental power and my hands are pretty darn full. So I'm going to have to put this down. Here's my iNew power bank. But we can see here, the metering. We have a lot more we can see in terms of metering before Eclipse. See that? The waveforms? Right now, you're not listening to that mic. You're listening to the one above me connected to my universal audio audio interface. But let's connect to my mobile phone and record that once I put this all down because this is just too much. The audio you're hearing is connected to my Personas Quantum ES2, connected to my mobile phone with some mental power using the Fine Fine Tank 3. And that's what you're hearing right now. How am I coming through? So this is a test of the Personas Quantum ES2. Right now we're listening to the Universal Audio Apollo being recorded with OBS to my PC. And we can see these two pieces of software open. This was $209, not included with the Universal Audio Apollo Studio Plus Edition. And this was $89, not included as well. It also does not, either one, does not come in native plugins. So you can just buy this alone. And this one lowers the noise floor and this one adds a bit more bass. Like if I want to add some more bass to my tone, I just do this and I can switch it off just like this. Like I can add whatever and I can add all these chains in here, but this is all to do with sound editing. I'm going to apply too much bass there. I can also add all these other plugins and add more volume. In fact, some of these plugins will allow me to boost the volume dramatically. Like if I uncheck this, let's see how it works. Okay. And if I want to add more threshold, compressor, gain, I can increase my volume just through the software. I can add more output. And that's what is a real game changer out of here. I can use 
the software to add more volume gain without getting a bunch of pre-noise hiss that I would otherwise get, which is really cool that way. And this is the game changer feature of the Universal Audio Apollo. Look at how many of these are all demo that are not included. And this was the most expensive studio edition. Here's the Personas Quantum ES2 software. There's really nothing fancy here. There's no clip guard, there's no compressor, there's no, you know, no denoise. There's no extra software. It's basic. If you don't need a mute to PC, this should work just fine. And this is where I have to notify you if you're not used to this type of interface and you're used to simply having the Scarlett 2i2 or the Vocaster, the initial setup is, well at least can be, a little more complicated. Once you know, it makes life a lot easier if you're unsure and only used I turn knob and it works type interfaces. Right now we're listening to the Meono PS22 Lite. You're listening to the mic option and not ASIO, but ASIO tends to be the best audio with no matter which audio device we have. So let's switch over. And now we are to the ASIO input capture. In terms of the software, I personally don't like it. I don't really know how to use this. <laughs> Just being blunt here. I can see how it changed the sample rate, no put licensee, not a problem. If you put little blocks here, just for instance, and put it on this output here, I found the headphone port had uh, quite the delay. Maybe that'll be fixed in software, but that is the current situation. Now the Meono PS22 Lite does have a bit of delay in the headphone port. Most time I really couldn't notice, but the resolution sounds lower than any of the other options. What if you're just a YouTuber and you just want something basic and you don't want to spend, well, literally in US dollars, $2,000 for add-on software with this device, which is the Studio Plus, plus $300 more US. That's $2,000, okay? $2,000. This was before tariffs, $70 USD. The Personas Quantum ES2 before any Terra 200 USD. The Connect 2 was 200 USD. Or wait, yes, 200 US dollars. And if we got the Connect 6, I believe it was 300. The value is lower on the Connect 2 for what you get in terms of ports and connections and everything else. That is where the Connect 2 really shines as a portable device. But maybe you love it for its clip guard because that is pretty useful. Turn the microphone up a bit more so I can distort. Now clip guard's on. Am I distorting? Right now it's, maybe you love it for its denoise because if you're a gamer, that can be pretty useful, but it kind of distorts and acts funny when you have lots of noise in your room. So be mindful of that. Let me show you an example right here, right now. Now let's denoise this. We have now denoised the room. It seems quite effective. I don't see any noise on my metering. Of course, no denoise test is complete without adding some more noise. And I think this much noise was too much for it to handle. The Mi Ono PS22 Lite is a value option, doesn't have extra options, but boy, does it have good quality for the price paid. This is unbeatable value as far as I'm concerned. Now let's talk about the Personas Quantum ES2. We see a mute button on this, but it doesn't mute to PC ever. It mutes to the mains out and to the headphones. Universal Audio, same idea. It mutes to the out, not to the PC, which for gamers might be a concern or to podcasters that want a mute button. There's also no mute here to PC on this. It just turn the volume down, just like you would do on all these other audio interfaces, but the Lewitt Connect 2 does have a mute. I'm on headphones. If I press mute, the headphones are muted. And you can still hear the audio because I have it connected to my monitor. That's the audio you're hearing now. I press the monitor. The monitor, but I could hear through my headphones. I mute the microphone. If I go to the microphone, it mutes everything. And if I go to instrument, if I had an instrument connected, I can mute the instrument by itself. Of these audio interfaces, the only one that has MIDI is the Personas Quantum ES2. Now, it does require an adapter to change it to MIDI. And with the newest firmware, I believe the MIDI is fixed because I know a lot of people complained about it cutting out. Leave your comments below if you own this device, at least confirm if the newest firmware fixed 
the MIDI experience on this. Inquiring minds like myself and everyone else really want to know. Thank you. Okay. I think we're done here. This is Eric of Spark E Studio. Don't forget to subscribe and help the channel grow. And if you have any questions, leave them down below. Thanks again for watching and have yourselves a most wonderful day.